Hello guys, it's Johnny Time and welcome to another Solidity Smart Contract Hacking and Auditing tutorial. Today we're gonna solve the fourth challenge, capture the flag of them vulnerable DeFi, which is the side entrance one. Them vulnerable DeFi is one of the best challenges to practice smart contracts and DeFi hacking. And in today's video, we're gonna do a walkthrough to explain you and help you solve this kind of challenge if you got stuck or if you're confused. And if you like this kind of content, of smart contract hacking and auditing, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification button. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So let's read the challenge instructions. A surprisingly simple lending pool allows anyone to deposit ETH and withdraw it at any point of time. This very simple lending pool has 1000 ETH in balance already and is offering free flash loans using the deposited ETH to promote their system. You must take all ETH from the lending pool. So there is a lending pool that offers flash loans and on the other hand, it offers to deposit ETH so they can use this kind of deposited ETH to give flash loans all right we have to take all the heat from the landing pool and somehow hack it let's see how we can do it so first thing first exploring the JavaScript test file and the smart contract let's see what we can find out so we can see this is all the setup of the smart contract the iter in pool is 1000 the deployment of the smart contracts the depositing of this thousand ether and the attacker initial balance is zero so here we have to specify the exploitation okay this is all the exploitation that we want to write and eventually we need to get to a point where this pool the pool has zero balance in ETH and the attacker we have greater balance than we had in the beginning which is probably very low um, so that's what we're supposed to do and now it's time to go into the smart corner and see what kind of vulnerabilities we can find there so this is the pool quite simple solidity smart contract it implements the interface for the flash loan inter receiver and it's gonna call the execute function that's how the, it will execute the uh, the flash loan and then this is the definition of the smart contract some variable here it uh, preserves the balances it's a mapping between address to you int to unside int and then we have the deposit function like described in the description uh, this smart contract allows deposit so anyone can it's a payable function where anyone can send ETH to the smart contract and it will store it in the balances uh, state variable so later on it can come on and claim its balance and withdraw it with a withdrawn function another external function where it checks the balance from the state variable the balance of the message sender set it to zero and send the value now this contract is not protected uh, with re-entrancy guards so it, but it's not uh, vulnerable to re-entry attack because you can see over here that the balance is being set to zero before the contract sends actually data to the uh, user. So we cannot do some kind of re-entry attack over here. We need to think about something else. Now let's check out the flash loan function. It's an external function that gets only the amount. It checks the balance before of this address, which is the pool address and then it makes sure that first of all the user don't want to borrow more than the balance that the pool has this is this kind of requirement over here then it's gonna execute it's gonna call the execute function that it implemented here over the interface so the flash loan receiver needs to be a smart contract that implements this kind of execute function and obviously it's gonna send the eater that he wanted to borrow so it calls this function on the receiver the 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 one who wants to borrow the money and sends the, 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 the ETH with this kind of function call and eventually checks that the balance after the function call is greater or equals than the balance before that makes sure that the loan was paid back plus interest or maybe just paid back because it also allows equals to the balance before. So that's how the smart contract works. Now before jumping into the solution, I want you to think, look at all this function, look at implementation, look of, try to think like an attacker. What could you do here in order to steal the money from the smart contract? Now, obviously we cannot do some kind of re-entry attack because the state variables are being updated before the money is being sent. Also, unlike the previous exercise, where we had to call any arbitrary function in any smart contracts we don't have it in this case it gets only the amount but once you connect the dots you can find out the vulnerability so because this smart contract implements 
flash loan and deposit, we can trick the smart contract to think that we deposited money even though we deposited his money. You're confused? Don't worry, I'll make it simpler. So obviously, we cannot steal the money inside the flash loan function like in the previous exercise because it checks if after the, in the end of this function execution, it checks that the balance after is greater or equal than the balance before. So again, we need to set some kind of backdoor and trick the smart contract that later on after the execution of flash loan, we'll be able to steal the money. How we can do it? We're gonna take advantage of the deposit function. We're gonna borrow the money, then deposit it back to the smart contract. So eventually this requirement will pass through because we paid back our loan, right? But we paid back our loan and also updated the state variable of the balances of our address with 1000 ETH, the money that we just borrowed. So it's, it's basically simple flash loan manipulation and that's what I like so much about these challenges because it really reflects real life DeFi attacks. We, we do the flash loan, we trick the smart contract that we deposited the balance, it's, it's very common in DeFi uh, hacking. And then eventually the flash one is being paid, but later on we come and claim our money with the withdrawal function because now the smart contract think that our balance is 1000 ETH even though we deposited his money, okay? And why it's gonna pass the, 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 this kind of test? Because we, we pay back the money, we deposit it, but instead of just sending the ETH back, we're gonna go through this kind of deposit function so it will think that we have high balance. I hope that it makes sense. And now let's jump into the execution and the implementation of the attack. So to simplify the attack, I just created this diagram over here. So the attacker smart contract will initiate the attack function, which will call the flash loan and will ask to borrow 1000 ETH. Then the pool will send 1000 ETH to the execute function that is implemented by the attacker smart contract, which will send back the ETH to the pool smart contract, but going through the deposit function that will update the balances to 1000. Quite genius, right? Guys, I wanted to share with you something super exciting and new. I've created a complete practical smart contract hacking course accumulating 12 years of my cybersecurity and blockchain experience. Without exaggerating, this is your holy grail all-in-one course which will instantly help you kickstart your career in smart contract hacking and security, making you the most demanded professional with insanely high salaries. Get exposed to tons of knowledge by signing up in the description below. So first thing first, let's create our uh, Solidity Smart Contract Attacker and let's call it side, side entrance attacker.sol and we're gonna copy some code from this smart contract. We're gonna copy the version. We don't need actually the import, only the version of the Solidity. And then we need to uh, declare the interface of the lending pool. So we do interface and we need to specify all the functions that we want to interact interact with the pool and obviously we want to interact with the flash loan with the deposit and with the withdraw so we need to declare all their interfaces we're going to start with the deposit the most simple one and just change it like this and the withdraw is the next function we want to declare over here and then eventually write the interface for the flash loan quite simple functions we just need to copy paste and change it from this kind of sign to um, this kind of sign. Now we want to write a smart contract. So contract, we'll call it side entrance attacker. And then we want to set some variables. What are the variables that we want to set? First is address attacker. And we want to know also the pool. So we do I pool. And in the constructor, we're gonna send the pool address. So constructor, and we're gonna do attacker equals message.sender and pool equals I pool and it gets the pool address. That's it, that's our constructor, quite easy, quite straightforward. Now we need to plan our attack. So we're gonna write here comments and step one, we want to call the flash loan function and ask to borrow all the money, right? Because we want to borrow all the money from the pool and steal it eventually. So we're gonna check the balance, one, check the balance of the pool. And then two, we want to borrow all the balance, right? Then step three is gonna be deposit, deposit the borrowed money to the pool. And eventually step four will be, 
withdraw all the money that deposited deposited not really earlier okay quite simple implementation of the exploitation let's start implementing it so check the balance of the pool and borrow we will do it in a function called attack it will get no parameters because all the parameters are already know from the constructor it will be external and we're gonna implement this kind of function so we're gonna call so we're gonna call the pool dot flash loan and we want to borrow all the balance so it's gonna be dot balance that's how we're gonna borrow all the balance of the pool in one flash loan transaction, okay? Now, we need to think what's gonna happen now. Now we're gonna get into the flash loan function over here. It's gonna run this line of code, this line of code, and then it's gonna call this kind of code, which will trigger our execute function that we need to implement, right? Because it calls the flash loan receiver execute function and we have to implement this function. And in this function, we need to deposit back the ETH to the balance, to the, to the landing pool. So we're gonna declare here and we're gonna do function execute. It will be um, external and payable because it needs to receive ETH. It's gonna receive ETH from the uh, flash loan pool smart contract. And here we're gonna call pool deposit. We want to deposit all the money that we got from the flash loan. So we're gonna do pool.deposit. Now it's not it's not tokens that we deposit. So we, we need to specify the, the value, the amount of ether that we're gonna send with this kind of function. So it's gonna be value message dot value. The message dot value is basically how much money we got in this kind of execute function because remember this execute function was called initially from the pool so it's gonna be attacker pool attacker pool and now the fun part once the attacker the pool think that we have thousand ether we can just call the pool dot withdraw to send all the ether to us now bear in mind that the flash loan function was already executed which means that we went through this kind of requirement and we passed it because we paid it back using the deposit function and now that the the pool will send us the if on the the, the last time uh, this time we want to send it to the attacker so we'll define here a fallback function a receive function so when the smart contract gets if without any data it will send it to the attacker directly so we'll define receive and it will be external payable because it's going to get the ETH eventually after the withdrawal execution. And we want to send all the balance that we stole to the attacker because we don't want it to be stayed in the smart contract. Attacker, send. We need to change it to payable. So it will work. Now we want to send all the balance to the attacker and eventually this test is supposed to work because the pool will have zero and the attacker will have greater than he had in the beginning because he have thousand more, right? All right, now that all the logic is implemented, we want to deploy the attacker smart corner and call the attack function in order to initiate the attack. So we're just gonna copy this kind of line of code over here. And instead of blah, blah, blah factory, we'll call it a uh, San Andreas attacker factory. And then side entrance attacker. This is the name of the smart contract. We'll deploy it as the attacker and contract and now bear in mind that we need to specify in the constructor what we need to specify the pool address so we're going to send it here at this dot pool dot address and we want to execute the attack so we'll do await attacker contract we don't need to send anything to the attack function because we sent everything through the constructor so now that everything is fun and simple let's try and run the exploitation so let's execute yarn side entrance to check if our exploitation works and congratulations guys you passed the challenge the exploit work we passed the test and it was quite fun right so let me know if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments below and if you enjoy this video and you learned something make sure to like this video and subscribe for more amazing videos in the future thank you so much and i will see you in the next videos bye bye